So uh, kia ora, I'm Matt. I'm uh, on the ALF team uh, as an analyst developer that likes to do front end stuff. Um, so overall, we've had 57 points committed for the sprint. Um, we didn't quite get there due to obviously various leave taken by the team and whatnot. Um, obviously, it's a very funky time of year, but what can you do? A um, bit of velocity change in negative, which again is unfortunate, but um, the upshot is, is that we've made a lot of good progress on our epic for the 4.2 grade book. So those numbers are the official story, but peer review numbers are even better. So there's more points there. Uh, so next. So what we're trying to do is this with 4.1. Pretty sure that was a sprint. If not, we're assisting with the unsync. Either way, we'll assist with 4.1 stuff. Um, we're trying to do our discovery tasks and all that sort of general sort of really nailing out behaviors and whatnot um, for the gradebook, um, at least for the grade report to begin with, because that's our first sort of stage of the gradebook 4.2 epic. Um, we've also implemented a sort of drop down initials filter, um, as well as doing some stuff like groups and also, we've been working quite heavily on the whole um, UX design of progressive disclosure with um, everything's tied into progressive disclosure at the moment. So we've made a lot of good progress to that. Uh, so next. So time for a small demo. Wow, can't wait for the curse to always pop up. Let's see how it goes. Is it sharing? It doesn't look like... Oh, yeah, here we go. All right, cool, cool. Right, so here's where we've got to up, where we've got up to this sprint. Um, so you'll see this is a grade report. Initially, you had a whole list of stuff there, like group selector, initial selector, um, as well as some new features in there, like this little search. So we can say, I want to search on Troy. And I'll find all users that match with the first name Troy. Say I only want to select Troys for some reason. I really like all Troys in my report, so now I can select all Troys. But let's say oh, I don't want to search for Troy. I want to search for something else. Maybe people that are uh, maybe they're at this domain. Oh wow! When I search, I can now see I'm matching on my email address. This will be enhanced in the future to show both the field that matches as well as the value that matches. So you'll see like email address with an at email or at mail or something like that. So this is all very work in progress. And you can show that as well. So you'll see all people who have that mail. And this also works with user identity fields. So you'll see here I'm showing phones, mobile phones and countries. So I'm say I want to search for users with phone numbers. And these two match. Let's have a look at Britta. Wow, that's the phone number 5511111. Cool. Right, so that's one part. We've now got group selectors that actually um, no longer show in the page, but now in our tertiary bar. Um, works as exactly how you would expect. So you can select group A, group B, whatever. Um, doesn't really matter. It's very cool. So that's in keeping with the uh, group uh, selectors that we've did in the user report and the single view report. So just bringing that consistency into the greater report. And now we've got, again, this is all dev code, so please forgive me. We've now got the initials bar that is now in the tertiary bar. Um, I won't go into specifics how it works, but it's basically leveraging all the old back end code, but some little tweaks here and there. Um, it still works, as you know and love it, but instead of doing a redirect whenever you click on the user, it will now you can select both values, then a press apply, and you'll see those users. Awesome. Right, now we've got some more stuff. Again, there's not much in the base demonstration, but there's lots of stuff in the demo. So this is where all the time's going, so don't worry. Um, we've got this nifty little, where is it? There it is. Uh, we've now got uh, uh, users per page with pagination. So you can really just 
trim down the um, data set that you're looking at at any given time. Obviously, you can paginate between it, but it all works. And then we've also got this drop down stuff in the. I believe Billy has been working on this, so we'll be moving to a drop down model, or maybe it's gone to icons. I'm unsure at the moment. Um, but we've also been doing work in that area. Um, you can also see some changes here with editing and all that sort of good stuff. Um, that's about it for me. Next is LMS Education Team, Mopis. Hi, everyone. I'm Carlos. I'm the team lead in one of the educational teams based in Europe. So, next slide, please. During this spring, in terms of points and numbers, it's good, I, I good numbers because it's a little bit tricky because in the last spring, we will focus helping the release with the integration and completely reviews. So it's what's easy this spring to focus more in our projects. And also we try to balance this time the work on the two projects that we have and the maintenance of our components. So, and it was good. So let's see, next slide, please. So we try to, to make these spring goals very broadly with with the spring. So we have um, uh, two blocked issues. One is the FIP with the new library, and the other is with the bad year. Later, Sarah will explain a little bit more. In terms of research and design course hierarchy project, we help a lot, Setara and Sabina, with the research and with the design and with doing the, the interviews and the coding and workshop. Also, we have done some small, big wins in terms of UX follow-ups on database project and or components we see later. And we have advanced a lot in the definition of the bulk edition course activity project. We already have a MVP prototype which we are going to share next Friday with the MUA. And also we have reduced a lot of the technical debt. So it goes a good spring. Next slide. Please. Looking at our small, big, great wins in terms of UX, we are ready to, to have this new information on the dashboard. So the users who has who has capabilities to request a course or create courses or manage courses, they will be shown information that can help them in the process. Also, we are in a new setting that we can, any administrator we can use to redirect the, the quick start guide for any URL he was. Also, we have fixed a little issue that prevented guest users go to the case course and add new topics on the discussions. Now it's possible to do it. And also we finished some, some work in the UX and the reactive panel to help in with the debug of the new reactive course editor that we have on the course. So next slide, please. Talking about the UX follow-ups that we have on the database project, we are ready help the teachers to work easily in the present, so adding new options in the in the market menu. And also, all of you know that the database activity, it has a lot of legacy code. So we are, right now we are working refactor the URLs to following the model coding good practice. So that's ready. Next slide, please. And finally, uh, we are helping a lot, Sedara and Sabina, with the discovery research and design of the Qs hierarchy. It was super good experience working and talking with the community. And you have here uh, some links about the co-design workshop that run by Sedara and Sabina with the community members. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Sedara and Sabina, in the next weeks, they are going to explain a little bit more with more details how this co-design workshop works. So next slide. Now it's time for Sarah to explain a little bit more the problems that we have with FFP and Bajur. So Sarah. Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Kona and I'm developer and integrator at HQ. 
Uh, yeah, uh, we have faced uh, two different problems. Well, one of them is with H5P. We are start uh, facing this problem like uh, one month ago, more or less. Uh, some activities on content types, like the course presentations that have been created in H5P.com, uh, uh, is not. They are not working uh, per properly in model uh, because they are using a newer version of the core API of the H5P libraries. Uh, we contact the H5P team about a month ago, but we haven't we haven't uh, got any reply from them. Uh, this morning, I realized that uh, yesterday they released a new version because they it's like they were using a new version in the H5P.com, but no new version of the libraries that we have in uh, core uh, were in the repositories. But yeah, they have now uh, this version, so at least now we can. Uh, work on them. We don't know their plan, so maybe, and um, we know that uh, next week they will be upgrading the h5p.com again. So probably there will be more content types, not just the course presentation, uh, involved or facing this issue. Uh, the problem is that we will need probably to backport to stables because otherwise people uh, that try to use these contents in their Moodle sites uh, they won't work because they are using a higher version of the uh, the, the library. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we are also facing up an issue with Bajir. Uh, it was working properly until one month, uh, some months ago, and then uh, it, it stopped working. Uh, it's not working in any Moodle version. Uh, we are in contact with the Bajir uh, support people. Uh, we are also in contact with the IMS, the one tech support people, to see how to fix this, because it seems that they have changed something in their uh, site, in their service. Uh, but it's not easy to debug. It's like yeah, we are we are doing our best and we are trying to find the best way to fix both issues, this one and the HIP. And next slide, in over to Ferran. Thank you, Susana. Uh, about the course editing, while while Sabina is working on the new prototypes for the bulk edition, uh, we use all those first sprints to reduce the technical debt we have in the course. As most of you may know, we, we implement the new course editor libraries and web services for 4.0. And because of the amount of work that represents, so we cannot migrate all the actions of the course to the new system. But the new system will help a lot with the bulk editing because all the new web services are meant to be bulk uh, by by default, so you can use it as bulk or as a single activity or section use. So we are keep uh, migrating all the old stuff to the new stuff. So we we implement all the, what is the duplication of an activity. Now it's using the new web services and their reactive components. Uh, the same happens with the deletion of activity. So now it's all brand new there. And for about the highlight and highlight topics, this we made quite a change in the way we do it. And now all the implementation of the highlight and highlight options are completely in the topics format. We did something that we need to do for some time ago, but it keeps mixing. Some of the logic was on the topics and some of the topics was in the core libraries. So now it's all moved to the topics. So that means that there's an, a good example on core on how to extend the actions of the course, uh, even with the new editor. That's a good thing. And it's not about the bulk editing, but because we are there already, we uh, we also migrate the drag and drop files into the course. So now it's compatible also with the course index. So you can drag files directly into the course index, not only in the course content. So that's a good thing in the end. And now I will pass you to the Sabina, who will show you <laughs> the prototype of the bulk editing. Thank you, Ferran. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to yeah, share my screen. Uh, okay. Okay. I hope everyone is seeing the screen. OK, so yeah, as Ferran mentioned, I've been working on a proposal for the bulk edition uh, course content uh, project. Um, and I've got a couple of proposals that I'll be showing to the MUA this Friday, but I'm going to show you one of the of the designs versions that I've created. Um, so um, 
for this, uh, we have the bulk edit uh, button in the course index. So all the actions that uh, will be related to, to the bulk editing will be around the, the index. Um, the other version that I have that I am not going to show today uh, will be um, uh, with all the interaction from the user uh, done around the uh, course page area. And what, what I'm going to be doing uh, on Friday with some members of the MUA is showing them the, the two options that I have um, and getting their feedback uh, in order to progress on the design iteration process for the project. So basically, um, by clicking the bulk edit uh, button, sorry, because the, my screen is a little bit small, so um, I guess you will be seeing this quite, quite small. Um, but yeah, you have the link on the on the slides in case that someone wants to to try the testing the prototype later on. So uh, by clicking the bulk edit uh, button, we will have um, the uh, course index items uh, with check boxes enabled, so the user can select any any item. And a sticky footer will appear here with all the actions uh, disabled. Um, yeah, some. Some of the behaviors are weird right now because uh, Figma prototyping uh, tool is not great. Um, but yeah, all the actions will be disabled until the user select any of the items. So right now we have the option to sell to bulk edit uh, activities, uh, resources, or sections. But as uh, activities and resources have different actions than the sections of a course, uh, the user won't be able to select uh, an apply bulk action uh, at the same time uh, to sections and activities. So once the user selects a, an activity or a section, then uh, the check boxes will be disabled for the other um, items. So uh, once we uh, select activities, the check boxes for sections will be disabled unless the user unselect uh, the activities uh, and, and then they can select um, sections. Uh, and the same will happen um, if they select sections, uh, activities check boxes will be um, disabled. So once we have any, any items selected, the um, actions will be enabled. We can select all or deselect. And by doing that, we will select all the activities or all the sections, depending on what was the, the first selections of the user. Um, and we have four main actions uh, for activities. So we have the visibility, duplicate, move to, and delete. And I've added a fight item here uh, for just thinking on the future and in case that we need to add any action um, uh, to this uh, behavior later on, we, we can have more options here. So we can um, edit the visibility of the activity. So we can hide it from the student view. We can make it stealth. Um, uh, these action uh, actions that we will the, the user will see in the model will change depending on the current state of the activity. So for example, if the activities are already hidden, uh, then this option won't be so here and we will have the option to make them uh, um, visible. Um, and of course, all the copy, all the text that you're seeing here is uh, provisional and we'll be working with the product experience team to create um, the, the final copy. So users can select the option they want and they will have a notification that will be stick uh, um, on top of the page. Uh, to um, inform what was the action that the user just did. Um, we can undo the action uh, quickly if the user was uh, making a mistake. And again, um, we can uh, continue with that. So every time the user perform an action, uh, we'll have notifications. And for example, for stealth or any visibility actions, we will have indicators on the course index um, and of course in the in the course page here. So um, we can also duplicate activities, we'll have the same behavior here 
um, and all the, the actions performed uh, within the course index and the course uh, page. Um, we can also move um, bulk edit, uh, sorry, bulk um, move any any items, and this will behave in the same way that the move functionality already work for single items in the course page. So we'll have a model to select where we want to move, and again um, the notification here. Um, with the undo action. And lastly, we have the deletion uh, action um, with a confirmation model uh, that we are uh, changing, like updating a little bit the, the UI to match um, what we did with the database. So we have the, um, the danger actions uh, in red to warn the user. And once the user has finished uh, selecting uh, or applying any work actions to activities, um, uh, they will close it, the footer here. Um, and we have the indications here. So um, I've changed a little bit the, the way in which we show the, uh, the stealth or hidden uh, indicator for an activity, uh, because we have complaints already uh, about the, the the size of the activity card. So I'm trying to squeeze a little bit all the, the content and, and make it smaller. So I've um, um, replaced the, the label that we had here for hidden or stealth with an icon. But of course, we cannot rely only on icons. Uh, and what we will have is a, a tool tip just to explain what this icon means. But this way we can uh, save a little bit more of a space. Um, and of course, uh, in the same way that the activities uh, uh, behave, we can do the same with uh, sections. So once the user select a section, all the activities uh, or resources checkboxes will be um, disabled. And we will have uh, just three main actions for uh, for sections because we cannot, for example, duplicate uh, sections um, in bulk. But we can hide, um, we can uh, move um, in the same way that I just showed. Um, we see that all the the um, the actions are being uh, reflected on the course index and we can delete a uh, full section. So by deleting and uh, hiding or showing sections, um, all the activities within the sections will be also um, deleted or hide or made them visible. Um, and yeah, I think that's, that's it from me. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and hand over to... Um, Which is middle class. Thanks, Adrian. Um, I'm Frances from the Moodle Cloud. I'm the product manager for our team. Um, so, yeah, a lot of our work this last couple of sprints is um, infrastructure upgrades and things. So it's not as exciting to show, but we'll go through. Um, next slide. Um, yeah, so just a quick summary of our, we've done 37 completed issues and 12 support issues completed this sprint. Um, next slide, please, Adrian. Um, so we had quite a few sprint goals. Um, there was a few small things in there, but there's a lot of ongoing um, upgrades and things, as I said before. So uh, the new sign-up server on um, Ubuntu 2.2.04 is online and on staging, which is pretty exciting. Um, we've upgraded all of our sites um, to Moodle 4.0.5. Um, the Moodle Cloud, um, the data set extraction has been deployed to our staging environment. That's still ongoing um, piece of work, so it will probably go into the next sprint. Um, our signups upgrade to Symphony 5 is also still in progress. Um, that will hopefully go on to staging next sprint as well. Um, and then we'll start um, testing on that as well. Um, another thing that we worked on was we changed our large plan to be renamed to standard. Um, it's been updated on the new landing page, which is um, comparing the um, sort of premium hosting plans um, as well as our plans. So it's sort of refocusing on 
you know, hosting Moodle in the cloud rather than just Moodle cloud. So seeing what other options there are. So um, it was a decision to change that plan, um, which is quite cool if anyone hasn't checked out that page. Um, our custom domain um, proof of concept is online, which is really exciting and Matthew will talk about that later. Uh, Rainmaker testing has been completed and ready for initial deployment. Um, the last one we did have in our sprint goals it's, um, was at least one customer has been interviewed. Um, we interviewed one customer, but they were a middle uh, employee, so it doesn't really count, but it was kind of a test um, first initial interviews. Um, and we're going to start that all new process in the new year when um, we think people will be a bit more interested rather than um, at the end of the year period. So uh, next slide, please, Adrian. Um, that was just a quick screenshot of that's the new um, standard name. Um, so if anyone wants to go and check out that page, it's um, Moodle dot com slash solution slash Moodle Cloud, um, and you can see the new landing page there. Um, I'll hand over to Matthew to go through uh, the custom domain proof of concept. And next slide, please, Adrian. Hi. Uh, well, that's going to be a quite uh, quick thing. Um, it's unfortunately a bit less um, impressive to demo than it uh, than it than compared to the amount of work that required. Uh, the, the main thing here is that we can now support um, other domain names on Moodle Cloud. It doesn't all need to be MoodleCloud.com. Uh, well, that's the proof of concept anyway. Um, there's some um, among the work that was done there was uh, identify everything else that's going to break when uh, when we deploy this and how to fix it. So that's part of the, the next sprint, uh, if not the next sprints. Um, and also I've built an idea of uh, the, the customer documentation that we need to build and um, yeah, everything that goes with it. So at this point, I, I've got a site that runs off uh, an, another domain name that we owned, uh, that we've owned for a long time. Uh, and yeah, it's running on staging. I'm very happy about it. There you go. Back to you, Francis. Um, that's it. Any questions? Um, 